What? Look, what you see in here is Toyota's all new bipolar hybrid battery type. Toyota Aqua is one of the models that use it. In the US, the Toyota Crown. What is exactly a bipolar battery and why is Toyota changing from Nikomoto Hydride to now bipolar hybrid battery? What happens with this? Why is Toyota not using this anymore? Hi, welcome to this new episode where we're going to finally take apart Diagnose because apparently something is wrong with this new battery. I am very skeptical, but still I want to find out what is the problem over here. And besides that, let's finally take this battery apart and explore Toyota's new bipolar hybrid battery. One of the first things that we need to understand is that Toyota has been implementing for many, many decades nickel metal hydride modules with six individual cells. For obvious reasons, efficiency, the corrosion and all this kind of stuff, they implemented now still nickel metal hydride battery, but in this case, they're using now bipolar modules, which apparently it looks like just modules connected in between them with absolutely no external connection, meaning that the module plates are directly connected in series in order to create a high voltage battery. Usually a Toyota Prius C Aqua uses 20 of this, the Prius uses 28, but this one only uses seven. What? Seven? Yes, but each one of these seven blocks that look like a skateboard, they have around 30 volts each one. So seven times three, it's about 200 volts. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on. The old Aqua was using 144 battery and the new one is using a 200 volt battery? The answer is yes. That's why the new Toyota Aqua is way stronger and efficient than the old one. But besides that, because this battery is bigger and still is nickel metal hydride, is... <laughs> ridiculously heavy. But without wasting any time, let's open up and let's see what's going on. Let me take out the covers right away. The service plug grip connection. This is the main fuse of the battery in the positive outlet. We see here the battery voltage sensor as well. The customer sent me a diagnostic report saying that the battery is giving a short circuit, apparently in one of the temperature sensors. I am very impressed that this happened at temperature sensors. This would be actually the first Toyota that I've seen with a temperature sensor issue. But let's check it out anyway. These are the seven plate modules of nickel metal hydride. I, I was wondering by chance you can disconnect these from each other. I don't know. I've never taken apart this battery because I said this is this is raw meat. This is new stuff. So once again, because we're having a problem with a short circuit with the temperature sensor, come on over this side and let's see if we can find out doing some measurements, some basic measurements first on the temperature sensors of this 2021 Toyota Aqua Hybrid. Yes. I'm gonna check the uh, disconnection that says bad. Apparently, this is the sensor that is giving us some trouble. I wonder why temperature sensor. But why is the temperature sensor with our orange connection? Oh, you see, pin number three and pin number one. Why are they giving me this reading? Ah, Uli, short circuit. It's giving me, it's giving me zero, zero resistance, which means that this sensor isn't short circuit, but why is this sensor in orange? Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Something is wrong here. A temperature sensor with, let's see where this cable go. Uh, Hold on, hold on. Something is wrong here. This connection is going to one of the plates and it's going to the other plate as well. Um, is it possible that, you see, are these connections the same? No. Are these connections the same? Mm, let me do a quick measurement here to confirm. I have a doubt, I have a doubt. I have, this one is also orange, but it's connected to this one. But this one looks very similar. Let me do a reading of this, pin number one and pin number three. It's giving me, yes, nine ohms. Okay, this is a temperature sensor. This one connected to this cable. Let me follow this cable. This uh, gray and red cable. What? Hold on, look. Uh, this connection but the red and the gray cable goes to this wire and follows to the voltage monitoring system. And it's giving me eight kilo ohms. Is it possible that somebody that's connected this wrong? And the other thing is that these connections look the very same. Let me just, let me see if I can plug this one here. Oh, what? I think I found the problem. Let me see, let me see, let me see. So let me just confirm by reading. Let me take, okay, this, 
this cable, the voltage monitor, which is orange, comes here, goes to this connection, which is orange, goes to this connection, which is, or which is orange, and goes to this one, which is orange as well. The other connections, which is this one that is giving me eight kilo ohms, this one apparently was connected here, and this is giving me a same value of a temperature sensor. To confirm that, I'm going to test these other two apparently temperature sensors as well. Let me see, we're gonna see if that's true. So these two, pin number two and pin number four, let me see. 9 kilo ohms. Okay, definitely a temperature sensor. It's not in short circuit. Let me see this one, pin number 2 and pin number 3. 9 kilo ohms. Telling me clearly that the problem is this one. I think somebody was dealing with this battery and they did. They disconnect this the wrong way. I'm not seeing any issue, but, ah, but I'm afraid. That... Okay, here this. So this one goes here. This one goes here. Okay, this one is voltage and goes to this one, it goes to the voltage sensor. Okay, this one black, let's just confirm again. Let's confirm again, let's see. Pin number one and three, let's see. Yes, that said, the temperature sensor is fine. It's, not, it's giving me nine kilo ohms, but it was connected in the voltage monitoring. But, but there's a huge problem. These two connections are exactly the very same. The sink, why they did these connections the very same? I don't get it, it's so easy to confuse them. I think this is the problem. The other, the other one, which is different, it's thicker, goes here, but the problem is because they connected the voltage monitoring system. <laughs> let me do a voltage, let me do a voltage measurement. Give me a second, a voltage, a voltage measurement. I want to see if by chance this one that was connected here to the temperature sensor has voltage by chance. Let me see pin number two and pin number five. <laughs> <laughs> what? Look, we have a 29 volts in this, in this voltage sensor. So this one is clearly reading the voltage of one of the one of the plates and then of course this was connected here in the temperature sensor sending 30 volts to the temperature sensor reading on the battery sensor what oh boy okay but i hope 30 volts over here didn't burn out the computer inside i don't see any clear damage here apparently None of the chips are burned. This board was receiving 30 volts. So I'm not sure if it's possible that burn uh, one of this resistor here. Mm. Difficult to say. The problem over here was not the temperature sensor. The temperature sensor was giving a short circuit, but it's because this voltage sensor with 30 volts was connected. Here, look at how easy you can make this confusion. Can't believe this happened, eh? Anyway. So that's how it is, that's how it is. So anyway, this is a diag with the Toyota's new bipolar hybrid battery. Stay to part two where we're going to take apart this battery and explore Toyota's bipolar hybrid battery. If you want to learn more, stick around for this, I'll see you then. Bye bye, don't forget to subscribe.